But there's actually a much, an even bigger problem, right? But wait, it gets worse, okay? Not only can z to the n be uh, multi-valued, z to the n can actually take on infinite values if you choose a, an appropriate or you might like to think of it as an inappropriate value for n. If you raise, not just to a non-integer power, but if you raise to a complex power, something with like imaginary components, um, not only can z to the n be multi-valued, it can actually have infinite values, not just like two like we have here. I can actually generate any value that I like if I'm raising to a complex power. You might say that that is bizarre, that is weird. Well, let me explain to you by way of an example how this works. Let's just consider this z to the n, which we're saying is multi-valued. Let's consider it for something really pedestrian, like z equals one, which is kind of analogous to what I was doing before here, right? Like a theta value of zero or a theta value of two pi on the unit circle, that's z equals one, right? So we're gonna choose z equals one, and then we're gonna think about, well, what happens if we raise that to the power of i? What is one to the power of i? Now you may have an instinct in your mind from what you've learned in, um, in the real number world already, right? One of the sort of fundamental things in uh, index laws is if you take one to the power of anything, like one squared, or one to the power of 20, um, or one to the power of even the fractions that we looked at before, we would have said all of those are equal to one. A really fancy way of saying that is that one to the power of x will always equal one for all uh, values of x that are real. Put in um, one to the power of a real number and you'll get one at the end. So your instinct might be that one to the power of i is one. It's not a bad instinct, but let me show you why it is not nearly sufficient. Follow with me, okay? What we're gonna do first is we're going to consider um, this value z. Let's consider it in polar form. So if I write um, z in polar form, um, like I saw earlier, um, this is a modulus of one, and it's going to be an argument of, well, let's, let's take the principal argument just to start with. Um, that's going to be uh, one being equal to cos of zero plus i sine of zero. So this is kind of like your stock standard way to write one with um, the trigonometric sort of terms to give you the, uh, the real component and the imaginary component. So far so good, but kind of like I, I sort of alluded to, I've just taken the principal argument. This is not the only way to write one as a complex number, as a number on the complex plane. And because of the periodicity of cos and sine, like they repeat every two pi radians, I can write one in an infinite number of other ways, just by adding or subtracting multiples, integer multiples of two pi. So just to look like one, one multiple of two pi on either side, I can say, well, it's also, um, you know, oopsie daisy, additionally, or also, one equals, uh, well, I'm gonna write dot, dot, dot because there is an infinite number of these, but let's go one to the left and one to the right, okay? So I can write it as cos of negative two pi plus i sine of negative two pi. Of course, I could do more of these, but um, this will be enough for us to demonstrate the point. That's one to the left, let's go one to the right, so that will be cos of two pi plus i sine of two pi. And again, that sort of goes off forever. Now, in order to work out, well, what does this mean in terms of exponentiation, raising to the power of i, I've got to get back into exponential form to deal with that, at least to know how I should evaluate it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say one equals, and now like I have on, on the page right now, I've got uh, one, two, three different ways to write one in polar form. So that gives me dot, 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 three different ways to write one in exponential form. It's e to the i negative two pi. Um, it's also e to the i zero, and it's e to the i two pi positively, and of course that goes on. Now that I've written this in exponential form, I'm ready to start thinking about what happens when I raise everything to the power of i. One to the power of i is going to be equal to, well, let's just think about this, right? Just like I did on our almost our very first line of working, right? Um, if I raise something to the a power, it's the same as multiplying by that power, right? So therefore, I'm gonna get here, uh, this term here, when I raise it to the power of i, it's gonna be i times negative two pi times i. So in other words, it'll be, there'll be an i squared there, right? So let's see here, I'm gonna get i squared, which is minus one, and then there's a negative two pi. 
hanging out there. Uh, here, you're gonna get I squared out the front um, again, which gives you negative zero, which is still zero. And then here, you're going to get I squared times two pi, so that's negative two pi, dot, dot, dot. So, what we can see here is that in fact one to the power of i has these distinct values. Let's deal with the, um, the negatives here where I can. So this double negative is just going to cancel, gives me e to the 2 pi. Uh, e to the negative 0 is in this context still 0. Um, and then you've got e to the negative 2 pi. Uh, sorry, yeah that's right, uh, dot 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 and it keeps on going, right? So from here what I have on the right hand side all of these are just real numbers. Um, they're weird real numbers, like I've got this all this transcendental business happening over here, um, but I can evaluate these, right? Um, I can say, well, what is e to, the na to, um, e to the 2 pi, I should say, let's that's, that's just take the positive one, right? So I've already got some, um, I've got my calculator over here, let's go, I'm actually gonna use this a couple of times, a few times. So I'm gonna go e to the power of, let's raise that power, and um, the first one that I'm interested in doing is 2 pi, so 2, and then pi. Hmm. Wow, that is a big number, right? So I'm going to write um, e to the 2 pi, that's 535.49, uh, that'll do. <laughs> I think that's enough decimal places there, okay? So that's e to the 2 pi, crazy. Um, then I've got um, e to the power of zero. I actually don't need my calculator for that, um, that's just one. Um, and then I've got e to the power of negative 2 pi, so let's raise that to the power of uh, negative 2 pi. Um, and I'm getting, let's see here, 0 0.001867 dot dot dot. Uh, wow, bananas. Okay, so what, have I, what, am I, what can I say from all of this, right? Well, what I've got here is different values, different real numbers um, that all are purporting to be equal to one to the power of i. And these are not the only ones, right? Um, not only can I go off in further uh, integer values, I can actually say, wait a second, uh, this can take on any, any different value that I want um, if I take on like one to the power of um, not just i, but one to the power of some other, you know, multiple of i or something like that um, will lead to some other value of, you know, not just uh, an integer multiple of 2 pi, I could have um, 1 to the power of half i would be just e to the power of pi. 1 to the power of a quarter i would be e to the power of pi on 2 and on and on and on. So in fact, I can actually, let's uh, introduce here a power and just put in a slider there. I can actually make 1 to the power of some imaginary number, some imaginary multiple of i, as you can see, it will vary the value of e to the power of, um, you know, 2 pi times that whatever multiple of i that I chose. So I can literally make 1 to the power of z, I can make it equal anything. So this is not just multiple values, it's infinite values. This is a problem, right? We were trying to say right at the beginning that Demarius theorem uh, gives us this ni nice neat relationship here, right? Raised to the power of n equals this. But we've seen with non-integer values, um, especially with complex values, you run into some serious problems. So, take a breath for a moment. What can we conclude um, before we move on? Demarius theorem only works for, is only valid for, um, integer values of n. Um, so therefore, in fact, our proof for the Marvel theorem using the exponential form, while valid, it has to come with these caveats. We have to say, yeah, cool, it's true, but uh, watch out for the domain of n.